Alright folks, we're inside the 2013 Ford Fusion. It's got the big 2.5. Uh, the window over here is pretty screwed up. And I said to myself, when I got to work this morning, I said, Self, you're going to record the first job that comes in for the people. So this is what you guys get today. We're going to start by attempting to take the door panel off without breaking a whole bunch of stuff, which would be nice. And it looks like this guy doesn't have his glasses, so you need a T-something. I'm guessing probably about a 25. We're using our Wear Tool Check Plus. It's our portable kit with the clip on the back for the mechanic with the on-the-go lifestyle. We're going to take out this first screw right here behind the door pole. Or not door pole, behind the door handle. Looks like that whole little plastic bit's going to come off there. Has your lock in it, so we're going to have to unplug it. Push in the little tab. So there's that guy. One torque screw. We'll set that down here on the floor mat. And there should be one down here in the door pole, and there is. And it looks like it may be a different size. Nope, it's the same size. Isn't that convenient? So T20 or 25. I don't know which. We'll take that screw out. There's that little fella. Same screw that went in the top. I don't know if this will come out, but it does. I don't recall having done one of these. I probably have at some point in my life, I imagine. But we don't have a lot of customers that have Ford vehicles for whatever reason. Oh, probably didn't need to take that screw out. That's all busted out in there in the bottom of that door pole. There's probably a cover over it maybe at some point. screw back here yep I wonder if that's the same size and it is but, oops <laughs> just throw that anywhere say I thought I felt one down here and I feel one down at the bottom too let me have a little look see what that one is that one's different that one looks to be about a seven mil so let's see yes the bottom one is seven millimeter that's an awful lot of screws for a door today's day and age but it's kind of an older car so stands to reason and there's that screw there in the bottom typically on four doors they just pull up but i think we're gonna have to pop this little speaker off here Perhaps I'm wrong on that part. Nope, this one is not a pull-up style, so it must have uh, must have pins in it. Let me get a uh, trim tool. all just plastic push pins on the back of this two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven all right I don't know if I counted them right but they're all back there and accounted for and none of them broke so that's always a plus so let's set the panel down can't see much on this little fella can we wow all righty then so it looks like we probably i to pop this plug out. The window still works, but barely. It makes a lot of racket. <laughs> um, what we got going on here? Oh, if this thing comes out, we gotta be able to see both of the bolts for the window regulator. So maybe this thing comes out. It appears that it does. Don't even know what that is, but just a little cover there you push it on the black tabs and that pops right loose let's turn the key on see if we can give the window one last hoorah here plug in our window switch again ok 
okay there's both of our bolts and that sounds like probably about all that window is going to write so I roll it down we can get a bolt here and a bolt here there's a 10 millimeter variety I don't know if we've got enough tool to crack them loose or not but we're going to give it a try we'll do our 10 mil put a little bit of an extension on there enough lead in my pencil this morning. Let's see if we can't crack them loose with a, a ratchet handle. When you get these loose, push in on the bolt because it's just like a V-shaped rubber sandwich that sandwiches the window. Sometimes they're kind of stuck to the glass. This is a pretty common way for domestic automakers to hold window glass in. Let's see, our glass should probably be loose now. There we go, yep, so our window glass is loose. Let's get some uh, suction cups, hold the window glass up out of the way because it looks like we have to take this whole mess off here. I don't know if it's riveted to it. I see a lot of rivets on a lot of things. Speakers riveted in, stuff like that. So I'm not real sure. Um, let me go get a suction cup. window out of the way. I'm going to get a little cordless screw gun and start unscrewing things. We're going to be smart about this because Monday morning memories aren't very good. We're going to take a picture of this thing. Click, click, oh yeah. So we're going to take a picture and save it on the cell phone. Handiest little device I ever came up with. I'm going to draw myself a little arrow next to where all the wire clips go. pop these out you'd think you'd remember all this stuff we're about five seconds after tearing it all apart I never seem to <laughs> so if you're in that same situation you're not alone you're not alone fella so we're gonna unhook this um, oh you know just make up your own stuff Call it what you want. Door, some people call them door handles. Unplug this little fella. Not really sure what it is. The thing that, oh, I see. So that's just the outer case. I was gonna say, yeah, we got some Torx bits there so we can take that off. I can see, man, that's all riveted on. That's kind of a, that's kind of a pain. We'll just use our little Torx bit here. Take our speaker out, because we need to unplug it. Set them screws down here. Unplug that baby. Oh, she's a woofer. Woof, woof. I did not grab a wire retaining tool. We can take the uh, door handle off while we're right here, though. That's one thing we can do. Using our wear kit. That looks like it's probably an 8 millimeter, if I had to guess. So, so far, we've had to use 7 and 10. And now an eight, so seven, eight, and ten is what you'll need. Oh, that guy's getting carried away. So there's that. And I guess we just leave it hanging. Because I'm thinking this is going to come off and then, you know. At least that's my vision that I have. We'll unplug that. This wire goes all the way up in there. Do we need to take the whole speaker off to unplug it? Because it must be mirror and then speaker. And to get your speaker off, you just 
Oh, <laughs> so there's a metal clip here and a metal clip here and it just snaps in. And I'd show you the connector on the mirror, but you'll see it. It's right there. Pinch it, unplug it. It's easier than moving the camera, right? Okay. And then as far as the uh, electric motor here, Super convenient how they did this. Reach back here, see if I can't hit the tab and unplug it. I did. So there's this little tab back there. Um, if I get some light on the subject for you. You'll just have to reach back and unplug it. Okay, it's time. Let's go get a wire retaining tool. Let's see how many of these we can snap off. And then unbolt this sucker. Get underneath that thing. There we go. Wow, there's number one without break. Oh, they're that style. So they're not Christmas trees. They got the wings on them. Releasing them from this side is difficult at best. But if you break one, don't don't feel too bad. Probably not the end of the world. So far, so good though. Well, would you look at that? We got every one of them. And this guy's got some tape on him. Boy, that's not going to be easy. It's that foam tape. I don't think we're going to get this one, folks. There we go. We got it. Whether it's going to go back together or not, I don't know. But let's take our 8 mil. Start taking all these screws out. Okay, so there's all those bolts. We'll set them down here. We're getting quite the collection. Oh, ah, one hiding behind this wearing harness. We'd have found it eventually. And this is probably sealed on. It looks like it's got some kind of goop behind it. Okay, the seal is all broke loose. And I don't know if it just slides out of here. Looking like we're in a... Whoa, fella! Another wiring connector that's got to be in here. Yes, sir. So there's uh, your door handle. We'll take this off. So we'll pop the wire off the back here. Your cable, I should say. Push pull cable. So there's the cable. It hooks it right onto the back of your, your door lock. Yeah, it hooks onto the lock side of it, just because that's how this thing's designed. So you'll see it's pretty, that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then, uh, then there is a uh, connector in here that's not as straightforward if you're not familiar with it. I'll show it to you once I unhook it, if I get it successfully here. Nope, I'm not going to get it successfully without light. So let me go get some light. Well, it didn't work out as planned. So on the bottom of this thing, there's a red lock tab. Let me see if I can fish it out. I dropped it in the bottom of the door. They're a real pain in the hoo hoo. Pain right in my hoo. Oops, almost had it. Get my meat nuggets down there. So there's this red lock tab. You'll see this 
Lighting sucks in this video, huh? Am I right? Let's see what's up right here. So we've got this little red lock tab. That sits down in the in this connector. Right down here. And in a perfect world, you just this sits in there like so. It's upside down, okay? You're gonna reach in there and just flick that thing back, but they come out really hard. You're supposed to be able to get them with your fingers and pull them back, but you can't. At least I can't. My fingers are really messed up right now. Really messed up, man. So now I've got it relatched on there and I gotta get it unlatched again. If it breaks, just throw it away. You, honestly, you don't need this thing. There, you slide it back, you push down the black tab and then ideally off it comes, but these things are, they're kind of silly. Like I say, we're just set to the side right now. We may or may not remember it when we put it back together. Make sure when you're putting this together, when you stick your wire and your cable through here, you have it on the right side of the regulator. Because if you have it on the wrong side, when your window comes down, it's gonna chop it off. We well, you chop it off. So I'm always telling Mrs. O. <laughs> so there it is, there's your window regulator. This thing's all sorts of broke. At least it's making an awful lot of racket. Faux show. And it looks like it's all riveted on. So before you cut your rivets, make darn sure you got new rivets to replace it with. I'm gonna have to look to see if I do. I think we've got window regulator rivets. washer on those ones. Another washer. So that, this side had a washer on it. That's interesting. There's that one. And then this side here. Oh, this side's tricky. I went and got big, we got a couple little rivets on this one. And a big one. Whoa, easy fella. Oh, come on. There. So I always just use my drill on super ultra high speed and a sharp bit. Just whittle the heads off them, okay? That's our regulator getting loose, but we still have to unattach the motor. And that's got some Torx on it there. And we're conveniently right next to the Torx drawer. This is a T25 I got in my hands. Wrong. So it's a T20 like I say. Unscrew that one. And that one and this one. I'm a thinking that this baby will come right off. But I've been wrong before. No, it feels like it's kind of bound up. There she goes, off she comes. So there's your motor assembly. A lot of wires in that thing. And now, This pit spot got a really, really jerk holes. This thing's got a rivet in it too. There. Get the, oh yeah, you can see where the cable's all chowdered up in that sucker now. So there's your regulator. You can see the cables wadded up in there. It's funny, oddly enough on our videos, people will question us oftentimes, like, why are you changing it? How do you even know it's bad? It's like, I don't know, dude, it's just broke, man. <laughs> it's broke, what can I tell you? And then it uh, looks like, I don't think this comes with a new regulator. Well, before I drill that off, let's uh, get the regulator and find out here. Probably not because it's aftermarket. 
Yeah, I don't see it. So let's, uh, that should be super convenient to line up. Idiot. Okay. I'm gonna knock the rivets here out of these holes. Spin on that one a little bit, make sure. Okay, that one fell out. That one fell out, so we're good. And I have no idea which way that went. Doesn't matter, rivets don't bite that tight. Hopefully we can still move it. We'll get it kind of half close. I do have to go see if we have some smaller size rivets. It's too bad that the manufacturer of the aftermarket regulators doesn't send the rivets to do the job. You know, to get the job done. But they don't. So, oh, how does this thing go? Uh, they've got it going like that. Right? Yep. That cable crosses there. That one does this, and this one does that. Set that one down for a moment. I'll set this one right here. And then this thing's gotta go on here, one way or the other. Got some of your classic 770, 2764. Pop a rivets from that for Hopefully they're right. They appear to be. Let's get the big rivet gun. And the small one and get after this thing. Alright, let's give this one a little squeeze. There's that one. Let's do that one. And good, we can still rotate. I didn't really jam that one down. Oh cray cray, because I didn't want her to get stuck. We're going to install the motor. First and foremost. And for what it's worth, that little wind up of cable and stuff in there, it does have lube in it. Um, I really got questioned quite heavily on our last window regulator video, why I didn't lube the track. Didn't know it was a thing. <laughs> I mean, some of the old mechanical ones with the uh, window track that, you know, that, that scissors and slides, yeah, they've got a lot of lube in them. Uh, typically, these things don't. I mean, you'll see lube like in the cable tracks and stuff. Um, I don't know, never, I've never seen it like in service data, except like I say, like on old cars, but. Some of the old roly-poly ones that literally never break. Well, then you get these cable drive plastic units. You know, they're not super great. Let's see. Let's see if we can't let certain line of stuff up here. Need one big rivet up here. down here let's see so we got that going right way do we yes sir it looks like we do so we're gonna push 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 on this one hold oh boy I felt that come across my finger Woo. get that out of there then I got some of your classic 770 2833s all right 3 16th rivets probably yeah He's got a little fatter head than what we need. But we're going to use them. Oh, 
There's that side. Get a couple more big ones for over here. like a little missile. Good thing it didn't whack me in the face. I guess that's it. That's what she looks like. And apparently, apparently, that clicks down into there. And I guess that's all you need to know, folks. We'll run the glass up, get it up by the holes. We can do that after we slip this baby in, but it's not too difficult of a job, but I bet if you're a DIYer and you don't have a rivet gun, um, maybe you can get little bolts, like little machine bolts, perhaps. Okay, what do we need to do? I know we've got a wire harness with the funky red clip that may or may not go back on. Okay, and then we've got the lock cable slash door opener cable. I'm just kind of leave this hang here. I'm going to reach through, put the uh, switch back in here. There we go. Make darn sure it latches. Oh dang it, did we forget the red little plastic thing that was pain in the ass to put on? Did we really? Oh my gosh, it's too late now. Can't believe it. Can't believe we forgot that. Dang. Next time, next time I get in there, we'll do it. I promise. I promise. Put a few bolts in here. Okay. Now, if any of you were super observant, you would have said a couple of them bolts are different. A couple of them got a big old fat head, like your nickname in school, fat head. They were on the bottom. Don't know why they're different, but they are. All the rest of them are little head. <clears throat> The only reason I knew they went there is because they had telltale marks on there. I don't think that I remember that, honestly. You'd have to go back to the beginning to see if I'm right. I think I am, but I could be wrong. We'll go through with the torque wrench. Now that you have everything torqued to the factory spec, I think that thing was in the middle. And there's that one. How convenient having these little arrows. Still gonna get it wrong. There's the connector. Plug in the mirror. You'll figure that one out. That one I'm not showing you. This went somewhere else. Did that go into our window switch? Nope. 
This one goes somewhere else. Up into this connector probably. No? I don't know where it goes. We'll figure out where it goes in a minute. Let's see if our... Um, oh, the, oh my gosh. Are you guys okay? Hello? Hello? Well, sorry about that, fellas. Oh, let's see what we do. Got the key on, shut the headlights off. Before we get super far, not that we're not already super far, let's see if this baby works. Oh, like a dream. Put that right where we can get to him. Shut the key back off. Grab the subwoofer. Thing don't weigh much at all. Wire in the groove. That baby right there. Lawnmower man's mowing the lawn. suction cups off but let's get a 10 mil let's get our this little guy here with the 8 on it we're going to steal that stick this on here we're going to get our 10 these are usually loose but we're going to make sure that they are and we'll slide our glass right down into this fella so that one's loose that one's loose Pop our suction cups loose. Oops. Of course, I can't tell if it's in. Find <laughs> the key again. Should have left this on. Should have left this plug in. Here's a guy who likes doing things six or seven times in a row. We'll just click it in this time. We're gonna let it down a little bit. I just wanna make sure that the window is down in the wedge all the way. We'll pull it in here a little bit and release it. Oh, see, it totally missed a slot up here. You don't want to do that, fella. You don't want to do that too many times in your life. Wrong. Make sure we have this one loosened up. Oh. <laughs> suction cups off these are handy little things for doing jobs like this let me tell you what okay I'm holding a little down pressure on the glass making sure it's in all the way snug those up let's see Sounds like my guy Josh is having fun over there. Air hammering. All right, we're gonna torque these down to the factory spec right now.
Well, I had to do that one a couple times, didn't we? Oh man, guess what? We, we forgot one rivet. Idiot. Oh, idiot. How many people are saying that, huh? They're watching right to the end so they can leave that comment. You forgot a rivet, idiot. And guess what? You're right. So that thing's back in. Put your rubber on. In, I should say. I'm gonna retrain the window. Oh, oh, you don't do these ones like that? Up and hold. I could be wrong. Down and hold. Uh, let's see if the express function works. Nope, it doesn't. I'm gonna have to figure out how to retrain, reinitialize the window. But it keeps popping down automatically. Which I knew we were gonna have to do. We might have to have the door shut or something funky, I don't know. Let me go look that up before we get it all together in case something weird has to be done. Um, so it has the auto feature. Typically on a lot of automakers, you just push and hold till it goes down all the way, and pull and hold till it goes up all the way, wait a couple seconds, and release it, and then typically it'll work. But this one has a, like some kind of anti-pinch feature. So as it's coming up, it gets just about up, and then it comes back down automatically. So let's see, uh, see what we can do to fix that, and uh, see if we can get a rivet in there. My rivets might have too big a heads. I don't know if they'll fit behind the motor. And I'm not going to take it all back off for that. I'll tell you that right now. So it's a good thing we looked, folks. We have to de-initialize the window <laughs> by one of three methods. While the window is moving, we have to remove power from the window. You can do it one of three methods. A, start moving the window and have somebody unhook the battery at the same time. B, remove the fuse while the window is moving. Or C, unhook the motor while the window is moving. <laughs> I don't know how important this is to the process, but it says, unless you're replacing it, this is how you have to do it. So we're gonna get our tab kind of ready here. Ah, you peck hole. What kind of freaking idiot engineer designed something stupid like this? I know, let's put the connector on the back. Because <laughs> this is how engineers talk. Okay. Well, the window is moving. It didn't say which direction, but. There, I unplugged it while it was moving. Apparently, that de initializes it. And then we need to go all the way up. Hold for two seconds. All the way down. Hold for two seconds. And then it should be initialized. Let's see if the express up feature works. Still not functioning. doesn't seem to be binding. I don't know why it won't take initialization. Let me try it again here. What a pain in the hoo-hoo. Yeah, pain in my hoo-hoo. We're just being nice because it's on YouTube. <sighs> Freaking thing. I'm gonna piss around with this for a little bit. I'll let you know if I get it. All right, so it's been a while. I've been screwing with this thing for the better part of a half an hour. 
I pulled the glass out because I'm like, well, something binding, why won't it initialize? And the, the car, at some point in its life, must have had tinted windows. There was a bunch of window tint still kind of jammed in the corners here, but I mean, I'll be honest with you, the, uh, um, the window rolls up and down fine as far as fitting up and let me run the regulator down. I ran the, the regulator up and down by itself. I mean, the glass goes up and down through the track smooth. I mean, there's not, I mean, if I let it go, it's gonna, it's gonna fall. I mean, there's no, there's no binding. Yeah, you feel it going into, you know, the upper window belting, but let me, uh, I'm getting just about sick of it at this point. It is an aftermarket regulator. Maybe that's our issue. I'm gonna get her relined back up in the grooves here. Try it 15 or 20 more times, and I'm just gonna call it. Um, just because I don't know, I don't know what else to do. It's starting to piss me off at this point. I'm gonna make sure that's opened up there. I've ran the window regulator up and down with nothing in it. Also, just to be sure. What's up, Miss Though? Um, what did you have to order for that truck that got tuned in? Uh, idler pulley and a belt. Okay. And you think that's all that's going on with it? Uh, it's, until I get it running, yeah. I mean, that's okay. that's what I see is obviously wrong with it. Okay. The belt fell off. Do you think that's something I've done today or nothing? Yeah, it shouldn't take fairly. If that's all it needs, okay. then. I mean, the window comes down on its own just with gravity. It's not even bolted in yet, folks. I can verify that the... Uh, process to deinitialize it does work because once it's deinitialized there is no express function of it. I've tried deinitializing it using all of their methods except removing the fuse. You know I've had Mrs. O move the window while I unhook the battery and you know that whole ordeal. So we'll have to deinitialize it. Hey, look at that, it freaking worked. Are you telling me that those little flakes of... Oh, I just wanna flip this thing off. I shouldn't flip it off, cause it works now. But honestly, I took out like, just a couple little flecks of window tint that were here and here. And I'm not, I'm talking like less than a half a square inch of material overall. And then I just wiped the dirt off the glass, I mean. What did I just do? Oh, I put this window bit or this up on here, which this should be on while it's initialized initially. Which I, you know, I've tried it with this uh, with this belting off also. Tried it on, tried it off. Like I say, I was running the window up and down, like just nothing is binding. Like it felt wonderful. I did it so many times that the freaking motor actually quit working there for a minute. Please go up and stay up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I tried straight up just swearing at this thing too. Maybe that's what worked. It didn't because I tried that first. So I guess if you're having problems initializing yours, which Ford service data the literature says one thing, but the switch says another. I'll read it to you. I'll show you what it says in service data. It's confusing AF because it's backwards. And I checked two different sources, Mitchell and actual Ford service data, and it's wrong in both. How it's written versus how the procedure is actually carried out. Okay, those are all in. One last hoorah here. Golly gee whiz, woo, it's in, we're in. Let's unplug this thing now. Okay, I'm glad we did all that before we put this crap back together. I gotta do this before I forget, because like I said, I was just trying any, trying all the different methods, because you just never know. 
Okay. I can't believe I forgot them washers and I almost forgot a rivet. Wow. Uh, but this is neither here nor there. I mean, those things are paper thin, let's be honest. I don't believe that's why it's not initializing on us, but that's right. It'll give the people something to comment about anyways. Keep them, keep them distracted. Let's see, we're going, we, do we have to do anything else over here? Anything? Yeah, we probably should put the door handle back in, right? I'll tell you what, that thing got me all sorts of flustered. We're gonna stick our door handle back on. Stick this back up there. Find our bolt. Was that an eight millimeter? This was kind of loose. I'm gonna leave it a little bit loose. I think we can reach through and tighten it, right? Yeah, that should be open enough. This way here we can get it lined up perfect because there's a lot of slop in this thing. You know, you can have this thing mounted all sorts of different positions. So we'll leave, we will leave it a little bit loose. And then the other thing you need to do, my guy, is you need to put your speaker back in. It's got two clips and a little alignment peg. We'll stick this thing right up there, get the alignment peg lined up, and just pop that in, put the connector on. Is that all you need to put in there, Mr. O? Looks like we're running out of parts. We got three screws left and a red lock tab. Do that with your red lock tab. <laughs> put it right next to your washers. Kind of a pain with that speaker in the way to get the top of that door lined up. I need to make sure that I have it perfectly. Yep, there we go. Because you got to get it that uh, top window track there. She sits down in it. Ba -ba -do -ba -do -do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to plug this in just yet. I want to make sure. Well, I guess I, we can plug it in. I guess it doesn't matter. Just want to make sure that this is all going to line up all good before we go tighten anything up. Okay. That screw lines up right nicely. Well, actually, once the door panel's on, that kind of sits where it needs to sit. So, once the door panel's on, then I guess you can tighten this thing up. So, we'll tighten that handle up. We'll get this little guy to come back in there. That goes right there. Then we've got the little screw. bit Get that baby lined up and then you've got the little screw cover get that slid back in there and that goes in there I like a so you've got the long torxy bit this one came from the back way back in here. And then all we should have left, I believe this one was a seven mil. So we're gonna have to swap this bit out here. And this one went in the bottom, way down yonder.
there's that. And now all that is left are these wires here, which plug into this little guy right here. down into the front. Oh, there's no retainers on that must be. If there is, they're broke. Let me get a, a bit of a small washer to stick on this because that bottom's broke out. And um, it's not gonna stay in unless we do that. Step two, undo everything you just did because you notice this piece of foam laying on the ground that goes right there. So we're gonna stick it on the door panel here. There. So yeah, folks, it's going back on. And now nobody can beat me. And the one's already on the back. I had to take it back off just to prove it to you. It's right back there. Wow. The things I do for the people. Hey, I'm the one that asks for the criticism, right? They feed off from it. Step three, start all over again. Start all over, go home, start your day all over. I found a little washer to stick in there. Uh, help out where that piece of plastic's broke out of there. But you get some fingernail goo in there, she'll be she'll be stuck good. So we're all back on. Just gotta clean the window off. Um, let's fire it up, make sure everything works so good now. Express down. Express up. Keep going all the way. So it appears that the hardest part of this job was the uh, relearn procedure. Reminds me of today's society. Overly sensitive and nonsense. <laughs> I don't know if that's appropriate to say, but it is. It's just kind of a nonsense feature that's overly sensitive. You know, I don't know. I get the idea of the obstruction, but man, it is touchy. It doesn't take much obstruction. I mean, if the kid's got his head out there, well, let him get it squeezed a little bit. That'll teach him. I'm not saying it's guillotine mode, but a little more pressure than this thing puts out. There you have folks, window regulator on your 13 Fusion. Uh, not a bad job, the job itself is pretty easy. That, learning that initialization business, that really burned my biscuits. Uh, but we got it in the end. But it just kind of sucks that I ultimately had to unhook the battery and now I got all the presets and whatever. But anyhow, works as it should now. Everybody should be pretty happy. If you're doing this for a customer, Wipe the dang window off, wipe the door panel off, even if the car's a freaking hog hole. Just clean it up, do the best you can. If you forgot them two washers, forget about it. You don't really need them. I don't think. I don't think you do. I'm not super worried about it. And then the red clip, forget about it. Throw those things right in the trash. That's what I tell you. And the other thing I tell you is go in the comments section. Questions, comments, concerns, it's down there. Insty, uh, Facebook, you guys know what to do. Just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.